Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine's Open Candle Company. Tonight I wanted to show you a few different ways to package and label um, handmade candles. Uh, I uploaded a candle making tutorial a few weeks ago and you guys seem to really like that, so I wanted to give you some more information on candles in general, handmade candles in general. So in my last video, I showed you how to pour candles and gave you a full tutorial from start to finish and how to do it in these 16 ounce um, glass containers from Uline.com. If you wanna find out how to make these candles, please go check out that video. It has all the information you need, including packaging and labeling for this type of candle. Okay, that being said, I wanted to go ahead and show you what I used to do and what I still sometimes do for gifting and making like more of a rustic vintage style candle. Um, a lot of the times I will still use mason jars to pour my candles in. Um, they're really great for candle pouring, especially if you're new to candle making because they are very um, friendly to use. You can pick them up at Target or Walmart. In my case, I pick them up at Winco. Winco is a local store in my area. You can get them on sale a lot of times in 12 packs for like, they wind up being less than a dollar a jar, which is very cheap. So they're great for practicing. They're great for experimenting. If you're new at making candles, mason jars are a great option. Plus they're kind of trendy. Um, people like to use mason jars and they like to reuse mason jars. So when they're done making their candle or using their candle, burning it, they um, can reuse it. So it's just a handy type jar to have around. So I wanted to show you how I package and label my mason jar candles. And um, I will provide links in the description box to most of the things that I still have here, um, if I remember everything, I'll go ahead and provide links to where I purchased them. So this is just a regular size mason jar, a two cup mason jar, and it's not a wide mouth, it's just a regular mason jar. It's got a collar and a fitted lid here. So I went ahead and poured some candles in here to show you. These happen to be Applejack and Peel, which is a great fragrance for the holidays. I think I picked up Applejack and Peel fragrance from um, candlescience.com. Um, but anyway, you've got this little fitted piece here. Now, this is where I wanted to show you how to go ahead and do this. So for me and the mason jars, um, I like to cover this little piece right here. Um, way back in the day, Way back in the day, uh, we used to spray paint these white and like glitter them for the holidays and put glitter on them. But you know, as time has gone on and styles and things change, um, I changed this look and it's, I think it's more updated. So here is um, one of the ways that I, that I do the mason jars. So I take a piece of cardstock and this is like, I don't know, medium weight card stock. You can pick it up at Michael's or Walmart or Joann's fabric store. And this is just like kind of a vanilla white color. And I have a stamp with my logo, a wooden stamp with my logo, Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Um, and I will provide a link to where I got this stamp. I got it on Etsy and I'll put the, the shop in the link below in case you wanna um, get your own rubber stamp made. Um, and I'll also, I'll also put the size because this actually happens to be the perfect size for mason jar lids and my stamp, my logo is a circle. So this is why mason jars worked so perfectly for me, um, for a long time. So I want to go ahead and show you how I did that. Uh, this is a Applejack and Peel. So I'm going to go ahead and use a green, um, a green, um, ink. This is from a stamp pad that I got from Joann's Fabrics and it's Me Memento brand. It's called Cottage Ivy and it's just dark green. So I'll show you how I do that. So basically I just take my stamp, put it in here, and I stamp my cardstock in the corner. I'll show you that. There we go, and I get a good image of my logo there on the cardstock. I'll show you that close up. 
So that's what my stamp looks like. Then I take a paper punch. This is a circle paper punch. And, oh there, look at my reflection. So here's a circle paper punch. And you can see that's what it looks like. And it's a two and a half inch circle paper punch. 6.35 centimeters, two and a half inches. I picked this one up, it's Recollections brand. I picked this one up at either Joann's or Michael's. I wanna say I got it at Joann's Fabrics in the paper section. So I'm, I'm kind of funny because I need to see the design um, of my stamp. So I hold my paper punch upside down so that I make sure I get my logo nice and centered. So I'm gonna show you how I do that now. So there's my logo. I go in upside down so I can put a nice border around my logo and I punch the paper upside down so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, then I get a nice perfect circle with my logo and the color I like because that matches the Applejack and Peel. Then I get my mason jar, I unscrew the collar, I take off the fitted lid, and I just use a bit of double-sided tape. And I make an X in the middle of the circle. Like that. I just make an X with the double-sided tape. Then I take my now perfect circle that was punched out on the two and a half inch paper punch circle and I just place it right over the top of my lid and I push it down. Now what you're gonna see is it fits the lid almost perfectly. But when I put my collar on, it covers up that little rim and it looks really good. So I just go ahead and pop my candle and I'm kind of funny because I some of the mason jars, the older ones have the ball mason on the front, the ball mason logo on the front. The newer ones look like this. They're plain. This is probably the kind you're gonna find. And it just says ball down in the corner. I really like to line up my logo. This is just kind of a funny, finicky thing. I like to line up my logo, the S and the company, the thing that says company right there, the words that says company, kind of right in line with the ball. I don't know, it's just a weird packaging and labeling thing I have. So I go ahead and I center that. I take my collar, I put it right on top, and then I've got that. So there's that. It looks so cute. So then I decide on a um, tag. So I'm gonna show you what I've made. Um, actually, let me show you my, my paper cut first. So for the tag, I use a two and three sixteenth inch paper cut. This is what it looks like and this is what it looks like on the inside, also by Recollections. These are kind of pricey. Make sure if you're going to get these at Joann's or Michael's that you're using a coupon. They have worked for years for me, literally years, so I've gotten my money's worth out of them, but they are kind of expensive to invest in. So I take my tag punch and I match the color. So this color is that off-white that we were using, that vanilla, and I just find the corner again. I go upside down because I like to see where I'm cutting, where I'm punching, and I go like that, and I punch it out. And there you have your little tag. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, well, first of all, you can write the name. You can hand write the name Applejack Peel, with whatever. If you have great handwriting or um, you prefer not to print it out, you can put in Applejack Peel. Um, for me, what I used to do with these is I would make a, um, 
I would make a Word document that had different, basically a grid. So you can make a Word document with a grid of the fragrance or what you wanna call the candle. In my case, I had what I wanted to call the candle, which was Applejack Peel and um, my logo on top. So this was something that I used to do a lot when I used mason jars all the time. And then I would take my, my little punch and I would put it through the grid. I would line it up where I want it and cut it. So you can do this or you can handwrite it, whatever you think. Then, and another thing you can do too is match this color to your stamp color on your computer and then it's all the same color. That's a really cute thing to do. Then um, I would take some twine um, or some raffia or something. In this case, we're using like a twine string. I picked this up. You can get these at different craft stores or online. I happen to have a local um, paper company that's kind of like a warehouse in my area. I think it's called, um, oh gosh, I'll put the link to the store in case you're local, but they actually do have a website too. So I'll put the link to the store in the description box, but I think it's called Paper and More or something like that, but it's a big warehouse and they have tons of ribbon and string options and paper and packaging and all that kind of stuff. So I will um, link a description to their website below. And they have pretty good prices. So this is how I've always done it. So I lay my candle down sideways, upside, not upside down. I guess I just lay it down like this so that the lid is facing me. I get whatever color twine I want. This would look cute with also like a green, um, with a green candle. And then I just kind of hold it out like this. I take my scissors, not a green candle. This would look cute with a green um, string or twine. And I hold it, I just take out what I think I'm gonna need. Now I've done this so many times, I just kind of eyeball it. But if I had to guess, it's probably about a foot in length. And then I take my, oh, I forgot to show you that I do hole punch these. So on the top of my tag, I'll show you on the plain one. On the top of my tag, Again, I'm going upside down because I like to see where I'm punching. I just go like that and I make a little hole punch in the top. So then I take my, I take my string that I cut and I take my label and I string it through. I always go on the right side, totally up to you, maybe because I'm right-handed, but I always go on the right side. I go like this, I make a tie. and then I make a bow. Now, if you're using raffia, it's kind of more, um, um, I don't know, it doesn't have to look so kept, is what I'm saying. Like this, yeah, I kind of have to make a nice neat bow out of the twine. I guess you could just make a nice knot, but with the raffia, you can just make a nice knot. Um, you don't have to make a bow, and it looks okay, looks nice. So then um, I go like that, and then I straighten out my, my tag, and then I just trim my, my extra pieces of um, ribbon down to where I think I want them. And there you go. That is how I package my mason jar candles. This is just a really nice, I would say kind of like a sophisticated rustic look. The last thing that I do, which I forgot to show you in my last candle tutorial, is I put a warning label on the bottom. So you can get these warning labels for candles um, at any um, online store that's got candle making uh, supplies. And they're just warning labels. They come in packs of, I don't know, a lot. I've had these around for a while, but they look like this. I think I purchased mine off of Sierra Candles which I'll put a link in the description box for that as well. But it gives a burning instruction um, and just a warning label to go ahead and you know keep your candle in a safe spot and trimming your wick before each use to a quarter of an inch. So this is important, especially if you're selling your candles. I pop it right on the bottom, and as you can see, it fits really good on the bottom of the mason jar. 
and there you go. And you have a complete candle to gift or to sell. So there's that. Then I just wanted to show you a few other options here for packaging. Okay, so let's take another um, candle that doesn't have anything on it. Now, I can use different paper options. So let's say I'm gifting this candle and uh, I just want it to look, you know, more handmade or you want to use the favorite colors of somebody that you're giving it to um, things like that or you want to match the color and you don't have a logo and you just want to um, make it look nice on top so i have this beautiful uh, watercolor paper called lux paper pad handmade modern a variety of watercolor inspired prints um, i got this at joann's fabrics so let's see if I can find a green, kind of green themed. Okay, here's a really nice green watercolor print. Okay, so we can use this. And if you don't have a stamp um, for your logo, that's okay. You can totally not put a stamp on this, but I'm going to go ahead and do that because I do have a stamp. Um, this one, the last one I showed you was green, so I'm just gonna show you uh, black. So here's my black ink onto the green paper. This would be really cute as well. And again, I take my little circle stamp and I just line it up to make sure I'm getting a nice border around my stamp. And this, this is how it turned out. Pretty cute. So we're gonna go ahead and decorate this one. So where's my tape? Okay, here it is. So we go crisscross with the double-sided tape. Put that down. Again, I'm gonna line it up with the ball Mason sign here on the bottom, just because I like it that way. And there's that. So you can use a colored watercolor paper. And then let me show you another way you can do the tag stamp. So then there's another type of tag stamp that I used to use. Um, uh, there's no brand name. Oh yes, there is a brand name. It's McGill. McGill Incorporated, and I'm pretty sure I either picked this up at Joann's or Michael's. This one's cute because it's got three different tag styles. Um, not styles, sizes. So you can either use, this is kind of cute, because you can layer your tags. So I just showed you that green um, paper. So if I was to come in through here and punch out um, three different size tags that go in the corner so I don't waste three different size tags like that. So there's that, you know, and then the, and then the medium and the small. Um, if I wanted to layer a different color on there, I could keep those aside and then Um, let's see if there's any kind of red, because Applejack and Peel reminds me of red and green. So if there's any other kind of red in this paper um, package, I might choose, I don't see any real um, vibrant reds in here. I see orange. So I might choose a complimentary one like that and do a little paper punch and punch out another three so then now I've got a couple different colors so if I could put the if I did this I could put the red in the background with 
the medium sized green on top and then the small sized red on the very top you can layer your tags so that looks pretty cute um, so I'll show you what that looks like all together this gets a little trickier to um, hole punch too you have to kind of go a little further down because the top of this little miniature tag is so tiny so I'll just put put it in where I can see it do a little punch and now I've got my three holes in the right spots so then I take this one and probably would want to just use a regular twine color again on this um, although if you had a green or red you could certainly do that too so on this one you could write in like I'll show you what that looks like uh, I have a marker here but I'd prefer to use a pencil um, or a darker color ink because I'm not sure that this is gonna go with everything so let me show you okay with a pencil I can write Applejack peel on the back Applejack and peel um, on the back of the tag and then get it labeled. So we're gonna string it through all three pieces. There we go, we're gonna make a bow here again. use a smaller sized mason jar you know because mason jars come in different sizes you can totally experiment with um, your different um, tag sizes I kind of like them to be oversized a little bit but um, though the good thing about buying this one with the three on it is that you can use different size you can use the four ounce mason jars and still put a cute little tag on it if you like or the little uh, six ounce mason jars so there is what that looks like with the little name of the candle on the back and then if you wanted to put a price on the top tag you could also do that so that's pretty cute okay and then one other way you could do this is taking another candle, putting on let's just pretend this is not Applejack and Peel um, just so I can show you some different color options here but you get the idea so you can do let's just use this purple one because it's such a nice color let's say you did a lavender candle which lavender is very popular um, you could just do a lavender cut watercolor. Um, I'm not going to stamp this one because I want to show you what that looks like if you don't stamp it. Um, and if you have a smaller hole uh, circle punch, you could get a smaller um, circle punch and put a different color right here, like a complementary color, like a yellow or um, blue, something like that that would look good with the purple and layer it right on top. Do that. So there you go. This is just a good way, like if you're gonna be doing these for Christmas, like perfect, right? It looks finished and professional. Um, so there's that. And then you could label, or you could put a tag on there with maybe, let's do blue with that purple. So I'm gonna punch this tag here with three punch, three punch. So 
so I get my different colors, my different sizes, and then my back to my purple. And I'm gonna layer, I'll put the blue on the bottom, the purple in the middle, and the blue on top. And there's how that will look when it's all on the, that's cute. So make sure you line it up. And there's how it looks like when it's lined up. And then you just get your little hole punch Go right over the top. Perfect. And now I'm ready to label. On this one, see I have a few different colors. I could use the purple twine, which I'll probably do because it's lavender. And again, you could write the, the name of the candle on the back of the, or on the front of that bigger bag if you like. Um, there you go. Oh, that's pretty. So if this was a lavender candle, um, that would look very, very nice. And again, this is just kind of like a more rustic look, but at the same time, it's finished, right? It doesn't look like handmade in a bad way. You know how sometimes things can look handmade in a bad way? This is handmade in a good way because you've got your professional little tags. You can put the name of the candle, lavender, whatever it is. You get your matching twine. And if you, again, if you had a smaller circle, you could punch out a circle and layer that there too. But um, that is how you do it. And you take your little warning label, pop it on the bottom. And that is basically the idea of how to do um, mason jar packaging and labeling. So it's a simple thing to do if you can find the, um, the hole puncher or the paper puncher things. And if you have the kind of twine that you like to use, or you can find the color twine that you like to use. But anyway, um, there you have it. That is the packaging and labeling of mason jar candles. Go ahead and leave some comments in the um, down below. Leave some comments and likes and uh, let me know if this was helpful for you or what else you would like to see in the candle making arena. Check you on the next video. Bye.